So first of all, let me just say that a birdhouse is a terrible product, but with any terrible product that is totally commoditized to where you can buy it for a nickel, there's an opportunity to create a new product that is way more compelling and way more interesting. And with 3D printing, that is now possible. So through this video, we're going to talk about how you would design a birdhouse so that it could be mass produced with 3D printing, and how you can create something way more interesting than what is currently out there. So it is possible to produce a birdhouse with mass production 3D printing. The scale is there, but how can you actually utilize it? Well, let's go ahead and just look at the traditional birdhouse, the normal design that's a box and a roof that everyone has seen hanging around in their grandmother's yard someplace. This design is not very manufacturable with 3D printing. It was designed to be put together with boards and balsa wood and sold for a nickel. But if it was a design that you wanted to make with 3D printing, there are some optimizations that can be made here. First of all, you don't want to print it in its normal orientation. You have to put support up underneath the eaves and inside of the hole and underneath the peg, and this is all adds to the cost of the part so that it loses the scale that 3D printing can provide. So the first thing that you would want to do is actually probably flip it over upside down. Now it has a pointed roof, so that's not the greatest thing to do, but so what you would want to do is actually crop the top of that roof just a little bit so that it has about a quarter inch wide strip that can be printed on, and now the entire house can be printed upside down with virtually no support at all. And all you had to do is make a very minor modification that doesn't majorly change the aesthetic of the birdhouse. And if you carry that through the entire design, it's not a big issue. Now, the other issue, though, that you have now is the landing peg. And that type of feature, there's a couple ways of getting it done. The most obvious would be to just drill a hole in the side of the thing and have that printed with a hole and then have somebody insert a peg after the birdhouse is done. But that's not something you really want to do in mass production either because it adds another step to the production process where human hands have to touch it. And that's something you want to eliminate. It also reduces the opportunity to do print on demand, which 3D printing can really enable so that you don't have large inventory stocks. So the best best thing to do with that little landing peg would be to design it with a chamfer on the bottom. But ultimately, support underneath that peg is not the end of the world. There's not a lot of it, and it takes basically a flick to get it knocked off. You have to make sure that the process is set up well to make sure that there's no sort of defects in the front from that support being there. But that's pretty addressable, and any competent manufacturer should be able to do that for you. But that is modifying an existing design. You're not differentiating yourself from anybody else. Your 3D printed birdhouse will look like every other 3D printed birdhouse and have basically no advantages. So let's go ahead and take advantage of the process that you're using. 3D printing can create some really interesting characteristics. First of which is, rather than a flat board in the back, how about we curve that? Now you can mount it to a telephone pole, to a tree, to a branch, to this some kind of rounded house. Anything that you want to, which wasn't traditionally possible, before because those flat board birdhouses would always have to be mounted straight against and try to be flush but never could be. You would be able to make a birdhouse that can actually fit flush against the round object that it's mounted to. You can also put a hole through the top just like any traditional birdhouse that would be perfectly strong. The fact that it's 3D printed would not hurt that at all. It would last for years just fine. But that's not that big of a step. You still have a bird house as everybody always imagines it. It's not very interesting. And if you were really optimizing it all the way, what you would do is actually turn it into an A-frame. And the only difference on little trick that you would need to know on this is to put the little landing dowel flat flush against the base of the birdhouse itself. That way there's no support underneath it. It prints as part of the first layer. Make sure that you round it out. And this birdhouse is actually really unique because it's able to come off of a printer straight into a box. So it enables you to do print on demand. Again, eliminating inventory, eliminating a ton of shipping, and ultimately increasing your margins because you don't have excess options. And you can just focus on creating large numbers of designs of birdhouses. You could give it different trim, different designs. You could give it shingles of different designs to match in with different areas, and you could print it in different colors. This is actually a really good baseline and very manufacturable. And you could make a thousand of them, or you can make them just as people order them and plug your website into something like the Slant 3D API. But, that is still a birdhouse that is all flat sides. It could be made out of wood. So if you're using 3D printing, why not take full advantage of it and create something really, really unique? Well, first of all, one of the first unique capabilities of printing that I really wanna highlight here is the fact that it can make thick walls. Most birdhouses are not made out of plastic because they would have to be thin, which means that the birds inside are either going to be very hot or very cold because there's no insulation, and thick wood has always provided insulation, even after the birds built their nests. But 3D printing is actually able to make really thick walls with infill inside, so it's like traditional 
foam insulation, but way more efficient than traditional plastic. So you can make a thick walled birdhouse that protects the residents quite well, just the same way wood birdhouses would. So let's take this a step further. You have 3D printing, you're able to create any geometry you want. Well, what is most different from a square box birdhouse? A round one. Why not make something spherical, make something bobular? You can make a perfect sphere that looks like the Death Star and put a little hole in the front of it and let the birds live inside of that. You have so much more creativity than what has been, ever been possible before. And you can even see examples of this out in the world. Inside of the 3D printing community, people have made birdhouses and designs that are completely unique and far more detailed than could ever be manufactured traditionally, but can now be manufactured for the same cost as the old balsa wood models. So use that. Inside, you could put internal furniture and have some fun. If you were really going into the product design, you might wanna make a birdhouse that's like IoT enabled with a small webcam on it so that you can see inside with the birds, which is really easy to manufacture with 3D printing. The possibilities get so much more open. And if you were running like a store that focuses on birdhouses, you can now create hundreds, if not thousands of versions of the same birdhouse without having to do tooling for each one of those versions. So it gives you tremendous advantages that you never had before because you're able to produce stuff on demand or at a smaller scale until you find the thing that works and then you can really ramp up using large print farms like Slant 3D that has hundreds to thousands of machines to really mass produce the product if somebody like Walmart comes a calling. So we went ahead and did this. What would be the impossible design that doesn't really come out very often? Well it turns out one of the most basic designs is wood. What if you wanna make a birdhouse that you don't really have to look at, that isn't loud and ostentatious? You can make a birdhouse that looks like the trunk of the tree, and you can make it merge and look like some wart or a knot hole or anything else. And something like this is basically impossible to manufacture any other way because it has really thick walls and a complex texture. And we added even a secondary texture to it. And we made it two stories so that you can have a couple families inside of there. And it doesn't stick out in your yard as a large, ugly piece of lawn furniture that fades over time. You mount it to the side of the tree and you can move on with life. So this is a really nifty design that was never possible before. And now it's something that you could add to your web store and get early access and early feedback without having to order thousands of these, basically just uploading the model. Now, a few notes about this for people wanting to manufacture outdoor devices. A birdhouse is something that is exposed to weather and sun. What are the materials that you would wanna use for something like this? Quite frankly, we would recommend most likely PLA because number one, PLA will last for extended periods of time, both outside and in the sun. If you want it to make sure that it doesn't fade over time, literally all you have to do is do a clear coat of UV protectant and you no longer have to deal with UV resistance so that it will hold its color for a long period of time. An object like this too, we would probably recommend some, some kind of post painting to give it like some green moss and that kind of thing so that it really blends in with the natural area of your tree. Or you can buy mixed and filled filaments that just have a more natural look and color and blend to them. Almost like a dirty, almost reject filament that goes from gray to black back and forth just like the bark of an aspen tree. Or if you are an artisan yourself and you're wanting to create really premium birdhouses, you could use like a printed on demand app like what we have, buy the part for it and then do your artwork on it and then you don't have to deal with the 3D printing itself. So there's a lot of directions to go there. But ultimately, the birdhouse is something that today is a very simple device that is commoditized and it's not something that you would want to make. But since you have this new manufacturing technology, it is an example of a product that can be innovated within because you can create capabilities that were never possible before and business models that were never possible before. 10 years ago, if you wanted to make a birdhouse, you would have to get molds and or buy some lumber yard in China and have them produce a thousand of these things and then you store them for forever and hope people buy all your birdhouses. Now, all you have to do is create a design, make sure that you're making it manufacturable, and then upload that design with some photos of the final printed product when it comes out. And then when somebody makes an order, that product can be printed and shipped directly to that customer. And you never have to deal with upfront cost of tooling and machinery and that kind of thing. And you're able to create impossible geometries with great insulation so they protect the denizens very well and can blend in in a way that was never possible before or stick out in a way that was never possible before. You can create capabilities that had never existed and could never be made before. So there's now a chance to make a common and 
basic product way more exceptional and create new companies around it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a lot of fun doing these design for 3D printing videos where we pick particular applications and show how you would design it to be mass produced in large farms like the Slant 3D Farm. So comment down below if there's other areas or categories that you think we ought to take a look at. We love running through the right way of going about this process. Have a great day, everybody.